Well, we're coming to the end of uh, Genesis uh, today and the final chapter, uh, chapter 50. So let's ask God's blessing as we uh, read this. Father, we thank you for the enthralling stories uh, of Joseph that we've been reading in recent days. And as it comes to its climax uh, today, uh, we pray Lord, that we'll be able to look back and see um, the, the lessons that you have us learn. Uh, we might be encouraged and helped for our current situation uh, today. Lord, give us listening ears now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So Genesis chapter 50. In the end of chapter 49, you might remember from yesterday, Jacob has just died. Joseph threw himself on his father and wept over him and kissed him. And Joseph directed the physicians in his service to embalm his father Israel. So the physicians embalmed him, taking full 40 days, for that was the time required for embalming. And the Egyptians mourned for him 70 days. When the days of mourning had passed, Joseph said to Pharaoh's court, If I have found favour in your eyes, speak to Pharaoh for me. Tell him, my father made me swear an oath and said, I am about to die. Bury me in the tomb I dug for myself in the land of Canaan. Now let me go up and bury my father, then I will return. Pharaoh said, go up and bury your father, as he made you swear to do. So Joseph went up to bury his father. All Pharaoh's officials accompanied him, the dignitaries of his court and all the dignitaries of Egypt, besides all the members of Joseph's household and his brothers and those belonging to his father's household. Only their children and their flocks and herds were left in Goshen. Chariots and horsemen also went up with him. It was a very large company. When they reached the threshing floor of Atad near the Jordan, they lamented loudly and bitterly. And there Joseph observed a seven-day period of mourning for his father. When the Canaanites who lived there saw the mourning at the threshold floor of Atad, uh, they said, the Egyptians are holding a solemn ceremony of mourning. That is why that place near the Jordan is called Abel Mizraim. So Jacob's sons did as he had commanded them. They carried him to the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave in the field of Machpelah near Mamre, which Abraham had bought along with the field as a burial place from Ephron the Hittite. After burying his father, Joseph returned to Egypt, together with his brothers and all the others who had gone with him to bury his father. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, what if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs we did to him? So they sent word to Joseph saying, your father left uh, these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now, please forgive the sins of the servants of the God of your father. When they, their message came to him, Joseph wept. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done. The saving of many lives. So then don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. Joseph stayed in Egypt, along with all his father's family, and lived 110 years, and saw the third generation of Ephraim's children, also the children of Machia, son of Manasseh, were placed at birth on Joseph's knees. Then Joseph said to his brothers, I'm about to die, but God will surely come to your aid and take you up out of this land to the land he promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And Joseph made the Israelites swear an oath and said, God will surely come to your aid, and then you must carry my bones up from this place. So Joseph died at the age of 110. And after they embalmed him, he was placed in a coffin in Egypt. Well, it's a remarkable end to this uh, book of Genesis. And uh, there are moments in that last chapter where, where the hairs on the back of my neck stand in, in just awe at what's going on. Think about Jacob's funeral. Jacob had left Canaan with a company of uh, 66 people. Um, an old man who had assumed his favourite son was dead and had believed that for 20 years. Uh, they had goods, but uh, they weren't uh, massively influential or great. Um, and, and, and now he's being buried with the full ceremony of Egypt and the Canaanites as this huge company turn up a staggered at what they see all the dignitaries of Egypt accompany Joseph and his family back to Canaan to bury uh, Jacob 
just the, the change in circumstances of uh, this family and uh, God's provision for them and for the honour that they are, are paid is, is, is quite a moment. And uh, this man, Jacob, who has been through so many scrapes and trials and difficulties, we've said to Pharaoh a few chapters back, my life has been short and uh, um, difficult. Uh, and yet here is this great honour paid at, at the end. And, 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 and what a moment, really. Um, all because Joseph had been through um, prison and slavery in God's providence. Uh, and then as we come to the end of that kind of that grieving process and, and, and that ceremony and saying goodbye to Jacob, we're, we're cast straight into the panic of the brothers as they worry now that their dad has died, that his protecting influence on them uh, may wane and that Joseph will now take his revenge for all the wrongs that they did to him. It's fascinating in these verses that uh, they are very clear about owning what they have done. So they talk about their wrongs in verse 15, and then they send this message uh, to Joseph um, asking for uh, forgiveness for their sins, for their wrongs, uh, and, and then forgiveness of sins. Um, there's no hiding what they did. There's a complete ownership of, of their wrong actions and acknowledgement of that uh, and pleading for forgiveness, fear of uh, judgment. And uh, it's just so powerful, isn't it, that uh, maybe if uh, he'd not been so godly, Joseph could have uh, um, taken his taken the moment to to exalt in this and to say, "Too right, yeah, you in fact time you fully repented and uh, acknowledged these things or, or whatever." But but actually, his response is powerful, isn't it? Verse verse nineteen, uh, verse seventy, he wept. He wept. Why did he weep? We're, we're not told, but I guess the, the thought of his father having died, that the fear of his brothers uh, and the emotion, and uh, I think something of what's going on in his heart comes out in, in the next couple of verses as the brothers, having sent this message to him, then turn up themselves and throw themselves on the ground and uh, say, we're your slaves. He, he could have said, well, uh, boys, do you, do you remember the dream I had? But no, what, what's Joseph's spirit in all of this? Verse 19, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. Here's the thing, because of God's intervention, because of God's kindness, their intended harm has been overruled. It's been uh, allowed to be played out and used for actually their greater good and rather than punishment for their sins uh, there is forgiveness and there is no provision for their needs it's just such a powerful picture isn't it now remember this is being written um, for uh, the generation that Moses is leading out of Egypt into the promised land a generation that has suffered much at the hands of Pharaoh a later Pharaoh um, and uh, has been in slavery um, and is um, uh, finally perhaps uh, uh, being released now or looking forward to release or having been released on the journey back. Uh, and, and here's the summary for them. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. That could have been said of Pharaoh, couldn't it, in the whole Exodus story, that he intended to harm them, but God intended it all for good to accomplish what is now being done the saving of many lives. And so don't fear. And as that was such a reassuring message to God's people in Moses' day, as it was, as Joseph looked back, what a message it is for us today in, in, in these difficult days of coronavirus, in these difficult days of, of lockdown, whatever we feel about all of this and uh, uh, the, 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 the rightness or wrongness of the government's actions, it, it's a miserable time for, for people. And there are people who are dying of, of all sorts of causes. COVID related or the consequences of lockdown and uh, there is there is so much that is is, 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 is causing harm at the moment um, and yet we can be reassured even in times like these that God is intending these circumstances for good to, to, to save people and uh, we can rest in that and that gives us great confidence doesn't it and um, and then as Joseph um, uh, prepares to die, uh, he says to his brothers, look, God will surely come to your aid. 
and take you out of this land to the land you promised on earth to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Um, and then repeats uh, 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 that and, and, and asks his brothers to swear an oath that, that God will surely come to your aid. And then you must carry my bones up from this place. Again, this reminder that Egypt is not the home. There is this covenant promise of God that has been played out through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob uh, to bless this people and through them to bless the nations and to give them a great big family and a, and a land, a home to call their own. And, and God will come to their aid and make it happen. And, and brothers and sisters, that's our promise, isn't it? Our, our promise of a covenant, not through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but through uh, the seed of Abraham, Jesus Christ covenant made and sealed in his blood a promise that he is returning to take his friends home to our father's home and that god will come to our aid and ensure that happens and we can rest in that and whatever wickedness surrounds us whatever uh, is, is happening of, of evil even whatever its intentions despite our own failures and and and, and sins that there is forgiveness and there is protection as god works these things for good and so let's look to his promises and trust in him even in these difficult days father we thank you for all that this story of joseph teaches us we thank you that um it's so honest we thank you that it, it shows, shows such darkness such real issues of, of family strife and uh, seduction and so on and yet it shows us that in all of this mess you are working for the glory of your name and for the, the protection of your people and we pray, Lord, you'd help us to trust you um, for your intervention in our lives and for your rescue. Help us to look to what you are doing and to have confidence in that, that you will come to our aid in the days that lie ahead. Father, have mercy on us and help us to remember that uh, the Lord Jesus Christ will take us safely home. We ask this in his name. Amen.